this is not a podcast. I'm going to start by saying this is not a podcast. It's a, Stop asking. It's an audio visual journey on the Joe Brown YouTube channel. <laughs> Today, BBB are back to talk some more robot history and how people got started. Today, the focus is on Gareth. Hello, Gareth. Hello. And also, we have <laughs> Craig here. Hello, Craig. Hello. <laughs> so, Gareth. What was the first thing that you got you into robot combat? I, I got into it because I went to university with Rory and, and Shaky. I first got into doing ants with them. But this is actually not my very first one. This is my second one. I've lost all records of the first one. What am I actually looking at here? <laughs> it, was, it was a lifter, but it had the quirk that instead of the, having like a little scoop that lifted, it actually just pushed down on the front wheels and the whole chassis lifted. Then I did my major project with one Rory Mangles for university. And during this, he was off doing a certain certain TV show for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I kind of got exposed to the whole world of it through that. He was very keen to do the whole thing again and wanted to, to upgrade nuts into a new design. And he kind of said to me, hey, do you want to have a go at building a multi brain? And that's how this <laughs> little piece of joy became a thing. Okay. So this was like the very first test bed for the nuts multi brain. So it was kind of like a little ant weight thing just with two wheels and the electronics on it <laughs> anything complicated electronics you don't want to be testing it on a 110 kilogram yeah. robot really so do you want to explain what the hell melty brain is the proper name for it is translational drift so you've got a robot with two wheels and it kind of spins on the spot now as it's spinning it turns the wheels on and off um, at the right timing and you can use that to point in the direction and go. The green light is showing you which direction it's pointing in. I was originally going to go into the robot for season nine, but Nuts 2 was kind of a bit not ready. <laughs> How was it going from bodgy ant weights to going on a TV show with professional Rory Mangles? I mean, it was actually less intense because we just had the one fight and that was it. Because <laughs> that's the yeah. legendary fight where uh, kind of Matilda took you out with the rear end, right? Yeah. So that robot was happened. It was a bit shit. Um, but Rory and Alex were still keen and Nuts 2 lived on and it did another season after that. We put the multi brain controller in. So I went up to Rory's farm for a day and we, we installed the controller in the robot. Installed a dishwasher, is it? Rory's dad, I think, had an old dishwasher just, you know, ready. Quite an experience going from, you know, this little bit of electronics controlling a, you know, 150 gram thing on a bit of wood on your bed to sticking it in a oh 110 kilogram robot. We sort of left the camera on a track to wheel, which is what you can see in the bottom left there. And me and Rory both kind of stood outside. I remember seeing this thing being tested in the robot's live arena, one of the live events. And even oh, through the polycarb, it was the most scary thing I've <laughs> ever been near. Yeah, um, but we have the long chains on, like you got double the tip speed on them. And it's, oh, that's, okay. that's the video you're talking about, Craig. That is, that's yeah, so it's quite a noise. <laughs> That robot went to season 10, and yeah, I, I didn't go to season 10 because I was in America at the time. Like, I was hearing, like, some, some crazy stuff going on over Messenger. I was getting, like, an update after every fight, and Rory was getting more and more excited as time went on. <laughs> it was like, oh, it's working, it's working! He wanted to tweak the code a little bit, so I was in my, like, Airbnb in the US at, like, midnight because of the time difference, like, writing little, little code patches for it and sending them over. How were you vibing on when you heard it was actually in the ground? And final episode to start with. I was, I was, I thought Rory was pulling my leg. <laughs> like, until I actually saw it on the TV show, I thought, I thought he'd been kidding. But no, it was actually, he sent me um, footage of the carbide fight as well, oh. which was quite a, a proud thing. It had everything. Oh it had the, the stupid pit of Behemoth by a midi bot. Um, <laughs> but it had the, the death of carbide via weapon chain. So what what now? Season 10 is finished. What was next? So my fir my very first featherweight was a four-wheel drive vert that never actually <laughs> had the vert attached. But of course, this robot was fully brushless. It ended up being floor flipping in the heavyweight arena at Robots Live twice. Um, one of the motors broke and I never touched it again. I thought, well, I'd, I don't want to carry on with this feather, but I do want to carry on with multi brains. So... I just decided to build a new feather, which was take cover. So at this point, I'd moved to Bristol to start my PhD. So I had access to a research lab full of random things, um, most notably a laser cutter. The chassis was fairly easy to do with, with a laser cut nylon. Now the tricky thing was doing a weapon bar for it. I, I got this big slab of mild steel 
and just screwed it into the middle of the robot, which is what you can see there. <laughs> glorious. <laughs> the glorious thing about Melty Brains is like it's pretty much a bar with wheels attached to it. So most of your weight goes into the bar. And this, this is when things got fun. So I had this giant chunk of steel that I needed to cut a, a battery-sized hole out of. <laughs> For anyone following me, don't do your weapon bars like this. It, my approach to this was to mill out a couple of slots by stealing my dad's mill for a bit. Then, you know, just going at it with a hacksaw. <laughs> It wasn't just the one, it was the two of these I had to do. <laughs> I got these tiny little hard ox squares cut for cheap and welded them on. Yeah, it was my first attempt at welding anything and it didn't break off, so I'm pretty happy Oh, with nice. That. That's the bar in the robot um, with the battery in there. Do you pad the battery in anything or was it just shaking around in a metal <laughs> hole? Shaking around in the metal hole quite rapidly. Y yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've added wheels now. I 3D printed wheels and kind of grub screwed them onto the outside. It's not a good way to do wheels. Do not 3D print your wheels out of PLA. Yeah, this is just a, a quick drive test. The first time you've done direct drive brushless, aka there's no gearing here. Um, so this was the very first hub motor based robot. It had the Melty Brain controller from, from that in it. The Melty Brain controller sits in between the receiver and the ESCs. The, the receiver gives the instructions to the Melty Brain controller and the Melty Brain controller tells the vests what to do. So that version of Take Cover was my first experience of insomnia. <laughs> uh, this is a really famous fight, isn't it? Indeed. This is the fight that led to inflatable entanglement being outlawed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the first two fights I had, my wheels just melted and I, I immobilized myself. Well, in this fight, I was trying to sort of just spin on the spot a bit more because the Melty Brain was causing the wheels to melt. Okay. Um, but as long as you keep spinning, it kind of was all right. <laughs> that's, that's it. So poor Equinox ends up with a, a rubber banana wrapped around its drum. We're giving it a massive smack in the drum at the same time. Quite a, a big impact. It has the potential to hit things. The driver is not reliable enough to do proper melty braining on. But if you look at the, the wheel there, you can see like a load of white stuff at the top. That's actually the wheel, but in its liquid form. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the main upgrade for the next version um, was aluminium wheels, which you can see here. So I had a, a friend to turn me some fancy aluminium wheels for them. It had quite a good run at the next Insomnia. It came top 16. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So again, it's kind of like, there's definite potential in the weapon, um, but delivery is the problem. Like. I, you can't really translate quite quick enough, and you, you two peer pressured me into building a beetle. <laughs> um, so naturally, my first beetle had to be a melty brain. Um, so it's pretty much a small version of Take Cover, but I, I did away with the, the stupid big bar going through the robot, and instead did two small bars, one going on top, one going below. This was my, my very first beetle. I didn't understand that 3D printing was not a good way to make beetles. <laughs> <laughs> and it had like a next version of Melty Brain controller, which was pretty much the same thing, just a bit smaller. So I did a quick bit of testing in the lab. Um, but yeah, it works quite well. And, you know, I was also a bit a bit cheeky and, you know, hammered a bit of wood with it once. I'll try it. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That's so good. It buries itself. Yeah, I had some good fights at BB3. Like, the main trouble with this one was it kept wearing down its wheels, and it didn't have enough ground clearance, so as soon as it wore a bit off the tyres, like, it was just scraping on the floor, which was its <laughs> eventual downfall. <laughs> main takeaway was just try and put more weight into the weapon, because this one was a lot of chassis, much less weapon. So, yeah, this was the original design for track. Bigger motors. Uh, bigger weapon. One of the big things was going single tooth as well. The whole kind of approach was to try and increase the weapon engagement. I discovered pretty quick that cutting a bar like that was going to be very expensive. I decided to do one big bar alley through the middle of the robot and then hard ox teeth on the end mm -hmm. awesome. and the classic old banana for scale there. These were the motors I went for with track and so to put some numbers to it like take covers motors were about 1200 watts each these are 3800 watts each oh. again i am using 3d printed wheels here and um, this time i'm using abs though and i have the extra bearings to stop it rubbing on stuff in this one i actually designed fans into the motors so the wheel spokes themselves are like little fan blades that would suck air from the inside and blow it out over the motors was the idea and this is this is the collection of parts that go oh. into the chassis on deck that's so cool <laughs> This is when I started casting my own tires. If you get if you get this mix on anything, you will not get it off. 
And then eventually we got some successful tires come out. So some little drive tests on this. I found like a really fun artifact um, with the spinning. So if you kind of spun it up and if you spun it down quick enough, it would you could like get it to flip itself like a coin. <laughs> So in theory, one day, I can do this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. This is going back to the Nuts 2 vibe. There was a nickname um, for those flowers as well, wasn't there? Oh, yes, I remember. It was Respect and Admiration, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it does need to be tried at some point. So that was the finished, finished robot, all packed up and ready to go. So that uh, robot was going to the Feather Champs 2019. Indeed. The last proper uh, Feather Champs to date. Oh goodness, autoplay has been going. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is fantastic. Is it melty brain in action? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it is! Is this take this is take cover two? <laughs> so I had its first fight against um, Get Shrekt. Um, so in the first first couple of fights, I was running um, the high grip tires, which didn't really work for, work out very well. I never managed to get quite quite spun up. I got stuck on the side against the wall. I will point out I had knackered his weapon. He couldn't spin up his weapon after this. Then my next fight was against uh, Fruitcake. Absolute block of steel, isn't it? it is. A literal block of mild steel. So again, like yeah, the, the small arena is not doing me any favours for getting spun up here. The ultra grippy tyres I've got on it was stopping it from getting properly spinning. But I do translate very well on it. Um, I put a massive on the side, but unfortunately I hit it straight into the pit button. <laughs> um, and then I had my third fight against Drumroll. I swapped out for the, the lower grip tyres. I managed to avoid the box rush, and at this point I get spinning. And now I actually get up to some speed. That's... Oh. Yeah. Like at that point, you know, it worked. Like the one hit, it did a lot of a lot of nasty stuff to their chassis. And I had my fourth fight against Aegis, which again was kind of struggling to spin up. But as soon as, as soon as you get there, it's kind of it does the thing. Especially once once it gets going, it is it is very much a one hit kill. <laughs> and then the final fight was against a very crippled Enigma. Enigma. It's a one wheel Enigma, but that does allow me to get up to speed a bit and Give it do my translate. <laughs> there we go. In the first round of the, the final 16. And they called that we're against each other. I was shitting myself. Because to this. Because you just, you just completely decapitated Felix's robot that was next to us in the pit. So I ended up going in, like, with the mentality of being a push bot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another thing is, like, those tyres smoke a lot, which is a terrifying thing to, to see from outside the arena. I love that it can push, hold its own in a in a pushing match. Yeah. Like, like I push you, like, one of your wheels goes over the pit. Like, or a like slide kind of, over the pit. You kind of, like, drag me with one arm into the pit. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I lost to the crab, Jay. Thank you. And then I... <laughs> but you, you then got... Oh, then got completely... <laughs> That was great. That was good fun. But also, you, you, you'd you moved on into other Beatles, hadn't you? And it goes to... Gear down for what? And now we have it!